Recently, I've been noticing a lot more interest in the Taos hum, Kokomo hum, whichever hum you want to talk about. Very exciting. <laughs> and recently, I put a video out talking about ways you could verify if you have an ultra low frequency noise in your house with something that you can actually put on an iPhone. Now, a little background, there's a company that builds these theaters that have vibration and smoke and smells and all this stuff, I forget what they call them, but they're an effects theater. And there was one built at a mall above an Apple store on an upper level. And they were having all kinds of problems with things falling off of the shelves, vibration, customers being really unhappy. So the chain that owned this particular movie theater, which will remain nameless, was looking to get it measured and try to figure out a way to solve this problem. So in the process, it turns out there's a consulting firm far, far away from here in another state, completely nowhere near New York, that typically does this for them. They design these in and this one somehow slipped by the cracks, this microphone slipping, and got installed without anybody doing vibration analysis and making sure everything was gonna be happy. So we got called in. We can fix that, we can fix that. <laughs> and we were asked, you know, what could we do? And we told them we don't have high-end vibration analysis equipment, but we do have very accurate type one measurement equipment that can get us down to relatively low frequencies of airborne noise. And we also have something in our iPhones called Vibration. It's an app and we're gonna go through this today and how to use it and how to calibrate for it. And we went out and did field measurements using this app in the phone and using our airborne equipment. And we generated a report that was sent back to this other consulting firm to verify what we thought was going on, what they would expect to have been going on. And we found some massive vibrations in the floors. Sometimes some of the floors, when the system was in its, you know, action movie mode, the whole floor felt like it was jumping like a trampoline. A trampoline? Better. But you weren't hearing it audibly at those frequencies. It was subsonic. And then there was the sonic levels, you know, explosions and things that were definitely audible through the building airborne. Yo, yo, turn it down! But we took all these measurements, we sent them off to these guys, and they looked at them and they said, yeah, this is pretty typical of what we see, uh, but we're gonna come out because the parent company of this movie people, whoever they were, it's whatever theater group this is, wanted them to do it because they normally do it. So they flew out with all their high-end sensors and drilled holes and floors and mounted vibration sensors and did all their stuff and came up with basically the same numbers and the same frequencies and the same amplitudes that we came up with using the accelerometers built into an iPhone. It's a perfect match. The iPhone had a case on it. And what we were doing literally was setting the case on the floor, hitting record and getting XYZ amplitudes of acceleration in G-force as well as millimeters and giving that information back to them and then charting it by frequency. So thinking to the Kokomo situation, if you've got a, a thing where occasionally you get something you think may be a low frequency hum and nobody can hear it, how do you verify it's even there? So the best way we can find is to take this app, which is not expensive on, on the uh, app store, download it, and then what you do is pick a surface in your house, let's say a tabletop near where you sleep, if that's where you're occasionally hearing this effect, and you do a calibration when there is no effect. And you get a calibration measurement, and then when the effect comes on, you take another measurement. And you can save these measurements either as snapshots on the phone, or you can save them as text files that you can email to yourself. And then you can have an actual thing saying at 10 Hertz, I had an acceleration of X, which anyone in this business would look at and go, yeah, something's really going on there, especially if your static reference was something significantly lower. So we're gonna walk through this. It's gonna be a little interesting. So I gotta do a screenshot on my phone, talking to this microphone, recording on a USB stick, handing it off to our video editing guy to try to figure it all out later. And then the rig we're using is a combination of a tone generator, a powered loudspeaker, and an analyzer. Unfortunately, we don't have a subwoofer lying around, so we can only go down to about 25 hertz reliably, which is very low. Uh, it's audible, airborne. But when you look at the vibration test we're gonna do compared to the airborne test, it's amazing how much energy gets into surfaces compared to the airborne component. So what we're gonna start out with here, is we're gonna start out with bringing up this vibration app and we're gonna go into the measurement mode, which is the time series here. You press this little 
button in the upper left hand corner turns into an X and you'll notice a very fine red line appearing along the X axis. That is amplitude in the X axis. We go over to frequency and, and you'll notice acceleration. You notice that at 27 Hertz, there's 0 0.0001 G of acceleration and then there's various other frequencies. So that's without the tone generator running. So let's go back in here. We're gonna fire up the tone generator is now generating an approximately 25, 26 hertz tone. We're going to take another measurement. You'll notice a much bigger red line appearing. And then when we go to look at it, you see this huge spike, which is the 25, 26 hertz, dramatically higher than all of the background noise. And then you go in here at that frequency you're getting 0 0.0252 g's of acceleration which is a major change from what you just got a moment ago now once you get all of this information you've got a variety of things you can do with it you can save the files you can just do a screen capture off the off the phone itself which you, if you know how to do that you click a couple of buttons and you get the whole thing and then back in here when you go back to the main menu you can email this file to yourself as a CSV file. So you drop it as a CSV file, you can open it in Excel and look at all the data. So what you can do by doing all of this is you can actually get proof of a low frequency problem that's going on in your house relative to a standard that you've already referenced by doing it before that. And the interesting part about it from the perspective of anyone looking at this later trying to figure out your problem is that it gives you data and this is accurate. We got on that one movie project we work on, worked on, we were getting energy down at three hertz that was accurate to the accelerometers by the big guy who brought out his high-end equipment. And the little iPhone with its accelerometers sitting in a case on the concrete floor was getting the same numbers. And whatever I'm doing to this thing right now, I bet it'd be crazy. Let's just, let's go back in there. I'm gonna just for fun. Let's just record this thing while I'm shaking the phone around. Gives you kind of an idea of the things that can happen if you were in an earthquake and you were doing this, that would be loads of fun. So that's kind of what you get in an earthquake. Yeah, those are big numbers, but you'll notice six hertz, very low frequency. Let's try to do something even slower. Let's try to do some very slow motions that might be considered very, very low frequencies. Could also use this as some sort of a lie detector, I suppose. So now you're looking at, like I said, five hertz, whatever. But the, the sensors in these iPhones are extremely accurate, unlike this headset microphone. And this data is very meaningful to someone looking at vibration and saying, hey, you had something vibrating in your house that was not there before at a particular frequency, and then you can note the time of day. It gives you some idea what you're looking for if you're trying to track something down and you happen to find out there's something in your vicinity that might be causing this kind of a situation at a particular time of day. Or glasses falling off your head. I mean, that could be from the Kokomo Hum. You never know. But anyway, I just wanted to follow up with this because this is a great app. We use this as a reference for a lot of things. It's not calibrated per se. I mean, if you really want to get into it, you have to, I'm gonna turn off my screen recording now just because I probably should. You know, if we were doing calibrated measurements, you can buy accelerometers that plug into the iPhone through the lightning jack and you can screw them into the floor and you can do all kinds of other things. But we found that the accuracy of this is so good with the built in that kind of like why spend the money unless you're doing a measurement for the government or something like that. But anyway, it's a great little app. And in the app store, if you go to the app store and you just go in and type in vibration, you get a lot of other interesting things about vibrators. No, we want vibration. Wait, wait, what? Vibration Pro is what you want to look for. 
and you still have a little trouble getting it, but it's Vibration Pro, it's under business, it's $24.99 for the app. It includes in-app purchases, but I've never needed any of them. But that's the, uh, the one you're looking for. So this is a way to verify some things, and it's a very, very good way easily using standard iPhone. This is an iPhone 11, nothing special. Anyway, hope you enjoy, and like, subscribe, all that stuff. Do those things. I've been told to say that.